welcome to the Lost Birds Knitting Podcast. I'm Allison, also known as Lost Birds on Ravelry and Lost Birds Fiber on Instagram. Hello, my name is Danielle and uh, I am Bright D on Ravelry and Lady D Bright on Instagram. And we'll kind of just jump right on in. What are you working on? Um, well, kind of same old, same old. I don't have a whole lot to show you guys this week, I'm afraid. Um, by the way, it is Tuesday, oh, yeah. December 23rd. Right, day before Christmas Eve. Yeah, um, we're recording a couple of days late. Um, I'm sure Danielle will talk about why. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, these are, um, the socks, same socks you guys have seen. Um, but you're on the cuff. But I'm on the cuff, so almost done. Hey, all Just right. Just doing a two by two rib cuff, and um, this is sock yarn that I dyed myself. And then the toe, the contrasting toe, it actually has sparkles in it. It's a Knit Picks um, Stroll Glimmer, I believe, in the J colorway. And. Yeah, that's it. That's those are my socks. <laughs> your se your seed stitch panel on mm -hmm. those socks. Yeah, and um, forgive me, I've never really worked in seed stitch. Is oh, it really? like stretchy or is it like yeah. constant? No, it's it's. I mean, it might not be quite as stretchy as the. Stop it. Yeah, but I mean, it's well, stretchy it's really enough. Decent. Yeah, it's not like it's not like um. A cable or anything. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say I might copy that for my husband's socks that I'm planning. Yeah, it's cool. I seed stitch is one of my favorites. I just love the texture, personally. So, anyway, yeah, I just I just took like uh, ten stitches um, of seed stitch up the side of each sock. So, just for a little added interest. Um, yeah, and then this is sort of, this has been in timeout, but I did pull it out and work on it a little bit this last week, so I thought I'd show it. No, I was like, you had it knit night last night? I brought it to knit night. I tried to convince Lindsay to work on it because she forgot her knitting, but <laughs> she, re she refused, and I don't blame her. It is kind of, I described it last night as intarsia hell, and that's <laughs> what it is, um, because all inside here are 16 little balls of yarn um, that are all attached at the same time that I have to wrap at every color change and um, try to keep untangled. I abandoned, I, originally when I showed this, I had like, I had the balls in this little Ziploc baggy thing that I had concocted, but it, what I really need are bobbins, but <laughs> I'm being stubborn and refusing to purchase any, so, but you know what, this, the little center pull balls are working just fine now, so, that's that, it's, I haven't made a lot of progress, but you know, I got a few rows in, so I thought I'd show it. And then, Slowly but surely, yeah, yeah, this is kind of one of those projects that's just going to be like, I'm going to grudgingly take out every once in a while when I feel like I should work on it. Um, and then I showed you guys on the bobbin some fiber I was spinning. Um, so I finished it, and it's been washed and everything. And um, this is a coreless core spun yarn. Let me see if I'll focus up close. Focus. There we go. So it's got lots of texture and variety in there. There's like Angelina, there's Firestar, there's Tencel, there's Merino, there's Silk, there's uh, Soy Silk, is There's that a bat you made? Yeah, this is a bat that I, I carded um, actually quite a while ago, and it was sort of a bat to experiment with, so I think I've, um, I've actually spun some other 
yarn off of the same bat, but I spun it differently. Mm. So this, um, I was practicing coreless core spinning, which I talked about last time, but it's where core spinning, um, traditionally is where you have a core, like, um, a lot of people use crochet cotton or, um, usually a co it's usually like a commercially spun yarn of some sort, um, something strong. And then uh, you attach that to your leader and um, and your fiber is wrapping around the core. So um, this is coreless core spinning, which means there is no core, but it has the look of, of a core spun yarn, um, but you're kind of, you're just using the same fibers. You're like splitting off a little bit of fiber using that as your core and then the other half of the fiber or whatever the other section of fiber is wrapping around around it. Oh, so, okay. I'm gonna... Yeah. So it was something I wanted to practice and I actually really love how this came out and I was worried my big problem with core spinning um, is that it ends up over twist over spun um, and I was worried that while I was spinning it that I was o over spinning it but it actually once I washed it and I so I washed it um, in what I did was I soaked it in um, not water. not hot not hot but pretty pretty warm water and then I um, and then I shocked it in a bath of cold water, and that um, kind of felt it. it you call that fulling, I believe, and mm -hmm. and um, it sort of semi felt the the fibers, and um, and helps them hold together. It's good for like um, uh, single ply yarns too, as well which this is technically. So anyway, um, I washed it and then it was, I thwacked it and it was, it was good to go. So that's all I'm working on at the moment. How about you? Very cool. So I am currently working on, um, just a pair of socks and, um, what I did on this guy, um, is a two row re repeat. Um, this this yarn is so backing up just a touch. This yarn is um, knitterly things, and the colorway is called Witchy Woman. And yes, it is Halloween sock. We've already discussed this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're a little behind. We're us. we're a lot behind. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Anyways, um. So I just uh, the cuff is here, and then I have a um. Uh, five stitch, uh, excuse me, knit five, purl two, knit five, purl two, um, on one row, and then the second row is just knit all around, and it ends up being this, you know, lovely stretchy material. Uh, so that is what I'm working on on that one, and I'm work I'm magic looping on, um, 1.5, 2.5, millimeter needles. I'll get this conversion thing eventually. I never will. <laughs> <laughs> it will happen one day. And then I am um, still working on the fireball um, uh, fiber that I, I have at home. Um, I didn't break the, the fiber. I just brought the finish, one of the finished bobbins. Um, so let's try to get uh, the shot. There we go. Uh, so you're so on I'm, your second bobbin now? Yes, I'm on my second bobbin. I'm just going to do a two-ply. Um, it's, um, uh, when you let it kind of kink up on its own, um, on average, it's ending up being kind of a, a heavy fingering weight to, um, uh, a, a, a light sport weight. Nice. Um, and so I'm trying to determine if I should do a shawl or something like that, because this, this fiber is a merino wool bamboo silk. So that's what it's getting that lovely little shine to it, um, and it's super super soft, mm -hmm. and I feel like 
like I said, it should be around my neck or it should be, you know, portrayed in some. How much do you have? Is that a four, is that four ounces? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't say, uh, since I haven't finished the other half, I haven't, I am not sure about the yardage quite yet. Do you, how much do you have left to spin? Uh, about a quarter. Okay. So of the four ounces, I have about an ounce left. Very pretty. I love those colors. Yeah, I'm I'm super excited to how it's turning out, seriously. But yeah, so um, I have those things that I'm working on. What you didn't really get to see is I made six washcloths out of the um, peaches and cream or sugars and cream cotton yarn. Um, depending, it'll either be peaches or cream or sugars or cream, depending on how long you've had it in the stash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Did it change? Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Or if, you know, you find that one, I don't know, Walmart or something like that, that's still carrying the, you know, way back when mm. stock. Uh, and you can actually buy it in the cone. I didn't realize that. Oh, I didn't know that either. Um, and so, um... But yeah, I, I finished those, and they are now in their new homes. It was part of my um, Christmas gift to my team. Um, they got a, a bar of the the Simple Soap Company soap and um, a Yankee candle and um, one of my knitted washcloths. So uh, they, they seemed pretty receptive to it, except for I had one a uh, couple of my team members who thought it was a very large coaster. Um <laughs> So yeah, there's that. <laughs> because that obviously goes with a bar of soap. Exactly. Not to mention its size. <laughs> yeah. And so like, it was, so it was, you know, it was like roughly six inch by six inch, right? And then I had one girl who was sitting her, her coffee on, on it on the desk. I'm like, you know, that's a washcloth, right? And she's like, oh no. And they must be used to drinking from very large cups yeah <laughs> i'm like you must have like a bowl that you drink out yeah. of or something i don't know because that's the old, like because that's a, essentially what it is right a very large cup is a, a bowl with a handle basically yeah <laughs> putting it down to brass uh, brass tacks apparently anyways um uh but yeah that's all i have okay did you go off course at all um, I, the only reason why I went off course recently, um, is my, my fiber. Um, it went MIA for a little bit because I was not. The fireball? Yeah, the fireball fiber. It, it went MIA, missing in action for a little bit because I, um, ran out the door one day and, um, left the fiber just kind of on, on t- top connected to my wheel sitting on a flyer, um, and my, my lovely Pri, who is my cat, oh, no. um, decided that it, it was her fiber now, and so she tore it up and <laughs> hid it underneath the sofa, and I had to, <laughs> and I had to search for it. Oh my gosh. And luckily it was, like, I, when I'm spinning, I, I'll leave, a, a small section of what I'm actually spinning. And then the rest of it, I'll leave in the braid. Yeah. And I don't, like, or... Take the whole thing, thing out. Yeah, th- I then, do that, too. And then, or if I do take the whole thing out in order to split it, like I, I did, I rebraid it. Yeah. Um, and so, luckily, it wasn't completely and utterly destroyed. It was just well-loved. Oh. For a little bit. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. So, well, you probably, did you know to look under the couch? Is that, like, a favorite hiding spot? And no, because there, there's a couple of different spots where she could have gone. Um, it could have been underneath the kitchen table in the far corner, underneath um, the TV room couch, underneath the living room couch, or in the chair in the man cave. Well, that narrows it down a little bit, you know, <laughs> at least. So I'm like... Or it could be in her letterbox and it'll be all downhill from there. Oh, yeah. It seems like it'd be a hard smell to get out. Yeah. No matter how much vinegar is in the fiber. <laughs> but anyways. Um, okay. 
Did you go I, off the course? I really didn't because I didn't do that much knitting. <laughs> so Please I didn't have a lot of opportunity to go off course. I know, I feel like yawning too. Ah, uh, it's been a long day. And so I only have to work um two full days and then a half a day tomorrow. Uh, for Christmas Eve and uh, like it seems like you are trying to compact an entire week into two days and it's just not working <laughs> yeah so but anyways how was your week um it was good it was I felt really busy but then I tried to think about what I did and now and I can't other than I think what it was, was trying to finish up all those Christmas ornaments and get mm -hmm. them delivered, um, cause they're a little bit time consuming and it involves, in the sp small space that I have to work, um, it involves like doing things in stages, putting, like pulling out everything for a certain stage of this ornament that I make and then putting it all away and getting everything out for the next stage, you know. So I don't know. They just they just end up taking a, a long time. And then on top of that trying to coordinate with everybody to meet up or mm. you know so many different people. So it was kind of just hectic trying to finish all those because I really I wanted to get them done before this week sure yeah. and so I could just kind of relax a little bit um or focus on you know Christmas and whatever I wanted to do for that so anyway so a lot of it was ornaments still I did make um it did make Christmas cookies, which um, I usually hate because I do not like Christmas cookies. They take so long, rolling it all out, cutting them out, and then the dough always gets too soft, and then you can't, like, move the cookies onto the sheet. I don't know. But my mom sent me... A cookie press and oh my god that thing has that thing made Christmas cookies so easy Just yeah like to the point that I um to the point that um I let Emrys help me because <laughs> I wasn't too I wasn't worried about it just being a huge disaster so he helped me like mix the the dough and he helped me um I operated the cookie press, you know, filled it with the dough and then squeezed out the little cookies and then he helped me um, put sprinkles on them and <laughs> it was really cute. He had a lot of fun and um, our cookies had a lot of sprinkles. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, I didn't realize how awesome a cookie press was because... It's it's one of those things, like, I never would have bought a cookie press for myself. I don't make cookies um, all that often, and I don't know. It, I never, it's not something I would have ever bought, but now that I have one, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's fun, like, making all the little shapes. Mm -hmm. It's, like, so easy, and then they look, like, super professional. <laughs> so... <laughs> Anyway, Christmas cookies, and then, um, I don't know, I couldn't really think of much else, um, but I will mention that today is the Emperor's birthday, mm. so it's a Japanese holiday, actually, the, um, oh, so that it only took me 20 minutes ago. Yes, yeah, it's a Japanese holiday, the Emperor's birthday, no matter what his birthday is, it's always a national holiday, um. And this, uh, um, this is the Emperor Akihi Aki, what did I, I wrote it down, Akihito, um, and 
they do they do something else that's kind of interesting in Japan and they um they have a they have an imperial date. So, um so they they use like the traditional um they use a calendar like we do, you know, they have a western calendar and you can you you know, you can say the year and uh the month and the day and obviously it's understood, but for um, official use, they actually use the um, imperial date, which is the, um, it's like the year, um, the year of the emperor's rule. So this, em this emperor has been um, the emperor for 25 years and this is the Heisei age so it's the Heisei year 25 even though it's also 2014 so anyway I thought that was interesting mm -hmm. so um that's all that's all I have for this week what about you um this week for me was a little interesting um mainly uh because um I had a family day with my husband's, um, well, you guys saw me just after, um, I had my company Christmas party, um, but later on that week, or, yeah, that week, uh, <laughs> I'm getting my time mixed up, um, yeah, I had a family day with my husband's, uh, unit, and so we got to go out and essentially experience it, uh, a range day with with him and so we got to go out and put on the helmets and safety glasses and the, the flak vests and all this other stuff and um went way way north and up into the valley and the hills and um just shot stuff off and um just had a, a lot of fun in it and um one of the things that they did while we were up there was um uh, do some engraving and it was really kind of cool because how how they um, did the engraving um, so for uh, for this they kind of um, they had a, a piece of piece of like regular scrap metal piece of plexiglass and then a piece of black uh, brass and they um, set some stuff off and um, the impression from the plexiglass actually pushed onto the brass. Um, so we have a couple of kids that we, um, you know, are friends of the family in, back in, in the States. And so we, we got their names on the, on the brass that they can hang on their, their room doors or something like that. So it'll be, uh, some, it'll be belated no matter what we do. Yeah, but it'll be some Christmas gifts for them. Um, so, they, I'm, pr I'm pretty excited. That I think they will like it. Hmm. Interesting. Um, and, um, but what do I want to say? And then, um, this last Sunday, why we didn't record on Sunday is that I had my, my branch Christmas party. And it was at the, um, Southeast Botanical Gardens. Um, and they had all of their Christmas lights up and everything like that. So it was really cool. We ha we sat, uh, sat and ate dinner. And then afterwards, we, we walked around, like, this whole botanical gardens area. And um, they had the entire place just lit up with Christmas lights. And it was very cool. Um, lately, though, it's been, like, what do you say, 47 degrees, something like that? It was 57 when I checked, yet, all, like, all day yesterday. Mm -hmm. Today was a little warmer, though. Mm -hmm. Today was sunny and nice and warm, well, but I'm before saying... that, yeah, it was kind of windy and lower temperature. I think... But um, at night, what do you think it's been? Oh, at night, maybe maybe 47 at night. You know, um, there was a big, there was a big storm, um, on the mainland, like, mm. a Hokkaido and... I'm sure even lower than that, but since we're getting fall off from it, but yeah, there was a big cold front that hit mainland, so we actually even got a little bit of fall off from that, so. 
It is getting really cold, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, really cold for us. We're, of course, all acclimated yeah. <laughs> to tropical weather. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so that kind of brings us up to speed because um, Monday we had knit night and... Yeah. yeah, Monday it was it, and it was a really good knit night. Mm-hmm. There were a couple um new girls that showed up, which was awesome. I always love seeing new people. And um, hello to Crystal and Megan. Yeah, if they watch. yeah. Thanks for thanks for coming. I know Crystal does. She's in our group. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, it was it was a good turnout, and so it was nice. I had fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, okay. And I was mean to a small child. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, one of the, the girls. Um, she fell asleep on the couch. Yeah, she fell asleep on the couch, and I woke her up. And it's never polite to wake somebody up, let alone a seven-year-old. She did, really did not want to wake up. Either. Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, do you have any bird calls? Yeah, um, I'm actually reading this book right now called The Dirty Life. And it's not actually <laughs> like that. Um, <laughs> um, and, but it's uh, about um, somebody's first year in farming and um, kind of going from a city lifestyle. This is your farm. obsession lately. Totally, dude. <laughs> and, um, I, and it, of course, like, I listen to it and it just makes me smile because, like, you know, there's been a couple instances where, like, um, like, uh, one of the cows, like, uh, kicked over a corner post of their pin, and I'm like, I, I kind of remember that. <laughs> <laughs> or some, sometimes, like, dealing with livestock, you kind of end up in a, m- more unique situations than you care to sometimes. Danielle is, has experienced since she grew up. You yeah. grew up on a farm, right? Well, um, my grandparents own a farm. I didn't grow up on it myself, oh, but I, I spent a lot of many time there. summers there and a lot of time there. So, um, and and she, the author who is Kimberly Kimball, um, and uh, sorry, I had a dirty joke just run through my head and I couldn't ha- help it <laughs> um, on that one, and so. <laughs> I had to restrain it. Anyways, um, <laughs> and she was talking about, you know, going out to a, a hay field and feeling, like, the crunch of freshly, um, mo- or freshly cut hay, um, the stubble of it underneath your shoes, and it's just like, yeah, I remember that, you know, sort of thing going on there, so I don't know if it's just me, like, wanting to farm in the future or me being incredibly homesick, mm-hmm. um, but maybe a little... Yeah, above. probably Some a little nostalgia, bit especially around Christmas, I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I've been driving my husband nuts recently of asking him, you know, like, hey, on our, you know, my, our future farm, what kind of animals should we have? And, um, you know, what, oh, you know, um, you know, what do you want to do in the future? And, you know, all this other stuff and about the future. And with our military lifestyle, it's very hard to put in dreams and like setting stuff in stone um so it's sometimes unless, we're t- unless you're talking very distant future yes yeah. exactly like if you're Which, talking like 20 years out um yeah and you know that sort of i'm talking about 11 years out yeah and um and so yeah i've just i poor guy i have just been driving him nuts um with asking him question after question after question he's like you know, like, ah, Danielle, come on. <laughs> and I'm like, sorry, dude. <laughs> See, so for me, I'm, I'm more secretly plotting. Because <laughs> I know that Colin won't want to, won't want anything to do with a farm. But he, I know he would be okay with, like, living not not like in the city but sort of outside of it on a larger portion of land land. so i'm not thinking like full-on farm but you know maybe enough to have a 
have a few little animals and um there's gonna be sheep in my future let's just break yeah them down. yeah but i'm not telling him this <laughs> they're just we're just gonna end up on like a nice little plot of land and then um the animals will show up spontaneously <laughs> They're going to be called, like, Noah's Ark. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't, sometimes I don't know what I want either, so. Mm. But, you know, those are, those are thoughts that I've had. <laughs> mm. So, one of the things that happened to us this week is that we found out that we have been extended. And um, so we will be here in Okinawa until... Uh, November 2018 and so I I think that also has something to do with the fact that I'm looking for you know farming stuff and whatever else because because you can't have it because I can't have (laughs) it yeah yeah because in my brain I'm like you know outside I'm like you know okay we're here until 2018 and inside I'm like no so, yeah. Yeah. It does sometimes feel over here like your life is on hold, Pause. you know? yeah. There's just, yeah, it's just not the same. You don't have the same kind of access to things or the same opportunities. Mm-hmm. And certainly not the um, opportunity to lay down any kind of roots. Right. <clears throat> so, yeah, it's interesting. Let alone have chickens. Don't get me wrong. It's an awesome experience. And I have been very grateful to spend all of this time in Japan. Um, But, you know, part of you does want to move on at some point and, (laughs) you know, have more more permanence. So, So, like, this this whole week for me, I've kind of... um, been visiting some farmers markets after work and you know whatever else and um you know cooking i have been spending an exponential amount of time in the kitchen comparatively um and because you know like i want fresh food and whatever um but i'm noticing specifically like out in the farmers markets and that sort of stuff that like in the united states there seems to be such a abundance um, you know, when, when it's fall, you have apples that come in and you can get apples by the bushel, um, or like, but like right now it's tangerine season here. You can't get tangerines by the bushel. It's you can, but it's, fif- it's, well, okay. When I say bushel, yeah, no, it's not, it's not a bushel. It's a small box. But any- anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, but I mean, like, and then you think of, like, per- like I I have all the things for, you know, canning and that sort of stuff. And they, they sell canning um, supplies in terms of, like, the jars and that sort of stuff at the, the commissary and the exchange. But it seems like there's nothing to can. Um, like, the tangerines, I would love to make, you know, like a type of marmalade or something like that. But it ends up being way too expensive um because it's i just saw tangerines and they were sorry i'm doing the conversion rate in my head they were roughly about a dollar 25 for um they don't go by the pound but a dollar 25 for a bag of three of them yeah, and it depends, too, because um, those might have been very specialty ones. They have... Well, they weren't in the boxes. Yeah, um, the the ones that I've been getting, you can... This time of year, when, it, when they're in season, you can get, like, a small bag. And I'd say there's, like, at least ten in a bag for a dog, for, like, um... What 150 saying? yen, a dollar fifty or so. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not too bad. I'm. There's got to be more than ten, even. It's it's a pretty like good amount of. Anyway, sorry. I might have to go where you're going, wherever that yeah, is. Yeah, I. 
Yeah. Let's show me where I'll let you know. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so like, I, I'm just in noticing a contrast, I guess, just because of the fact that like, when, when you do have vegetables come in and it's normally like, you know, we'll have tomatoes out here and you'll get some tomatoes that are kind of like a reddish green, like they're not 100% ripe yet, but because it's due to the humidity level out here, um, it's very hard to have vine ripened tomatoes without them splitting because because of the humidity, they're more likely to split out here. Um, but at the same time, if you get them in the United States, you can, you know, you know, get a, a bushel of them or, you know, giant one. Yeah, they might have, they may not be the prettiest ones on the planet, but they're still functioning, you know? They, yeah, they do not, they don't tend to sell things in a lot of bulk here. Right. So. Well, and there, in a typical Japanese home, there's not room to put it. Yeah. That too. Yeah. It's just a different, um... Lifestyle mentality. Yeah, a different mentality. <clears throat> Versus me and my midwesternness and like wanting to have a root cellar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so, what was the name of that book again? Oh, it's called The Dirty Life by Kimberly uh, Kimball. And there's a couple of different times in there that just cracked me up so bad. Um, I don't know. It's. It's always a little bit funnier when you're dealing with animals because you always ha are, like, on some level of filth, you know? So it just, you have to be lighthearted about it or else you're, like, you're just going to be like, oh, I'm gross, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyways. Um, uh, so, yeah, that's my bird call. Do you have a bird call? Okay, um, I just wanted to give a bird call to one of our viewers, Sarah Toganidin, who is in Japan right now. Oh, visiting yeah? Visiting her daughter, um, who's Ichigo Knitter, and she actually has a little podcast going. I think she just started it about her, um, she's, like, studying abroad in Japan, I think. Mm -hmm. Ichigo Knitter? Ichigo Knitter. Okay. Yeah. Um, is Saratoga Knitter's daughter. Okay. And so Saratoga Knitter is in Japan visiting her daughter who is, Ichigo I believe, Knitter. yes, I believe studying abroad. Um, so I've seen her pictures on Instagram and, and whatnot. So I just wanted to say hello and welcome to Japan. And it looks like you're having a blast. So I hope you're enjoying it. <laughs> they're in mainland, yeah. They're in mainland. Mm. She said they're um, outside of Osaka. Oh, okay. Yeah, and Osaka is a very cool city. Um, and, of course, Kyoto is very close to there. Um, I'm not sure exactly where they are, but in any case, they're obviously in a very interesting area, so I'm sure they're having a blast. <laughs> um, do, I didn't get anything in the mail, so mail call is all you. Hey, all right. So there's going to be some crumpling, and I apologize. And, of course, it's right underneath the microphone, so that doesn't help at all. There we go. Um, so I got two skeins. They finally came. Um, they were shipped out quite some time ago, but um, apparently there was a barge that was missing in action, or somehow it got caught on fire or something like I that. my soap's on that barge. Right. <laughs> Anyways, um, so this is Knitterly Things. I, I, again. Um, so I have the witchy woman from Knitterly Things, and then this is um, Knitterly thing, Knitterly Things in the Vesper sock, and this is 100% marine, uh, superwash merino wool. It's self-striping, and this um, colorway is called Hellfire. Is it focusing? It wants to. It's thinking about it. I might have to move it around a little bit or something. Closer even. There Here we go. go. <laughs> Alright, celebration. <laughs> and so yeah, there's that. And it's just knitterlythings.com. And so yeah, I got two skeins of that, thinking that um, I will need that for my husband's socks. Because 
Uh, my husband is six foot three, sometimes six foot four on a good day, and um, has very large feet. However, with that being said, I am almost done with a pair of socks, though I am told that they are small socks uh, by many in in of individuals. They do look fairly small. But I have this much yarn left of the witchy woman. So I'm like, did I really need to buy two skeins? You should weigh it. Yeah. Because this is feeling like... Yeah, you should see about, exactly how much you use. I don't know. This is feeling like it's about 30 grams, which is a lot. Yeah. Just saying. Because... Well, yeah, it's almost half. I mean... Sort of, I guess. Almost half. Mm -hmm. So well, yeah, there's... Not really. <laughs> there is that. So the more research needs to be conducted under it for this. Yeah. Experiments need to ensue. Anyways. But yeah. There... And so these are going to be my cri my husband's Christmas socks because I, I make him socks every year for Christmas. Uh, and I asked him if... He you know, this this fabric or the feel of this is okay for him. Um, and he said, yeah, sure, fine. Um, I, you know, I, I, for my socks, because I wanted to make myself socks out of this as well, um, I think I might drop down to zeros, but he said he's cool with the, the 1.5, so we'll, we'll leave it at that. Oh, wait, are those only 50? Oh, no. I no, no. Okay, that's the dye a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, are those only 50 grams and you only use 20? No, that doesn't make sense. Okay. But it, I'm noticing with um, the Vesper sock that it is on the light fingering side. It is. It's mm -hmm. a very, uh, yeah, it's a very light fingering. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, dropping down to the zeros might be good for me um, because... I, I'm used to my socks being more on the bulletproof side. Um, I would say those are still pretty, like, substantial. Bulletproof? Yeah, I mean, I compared to what, compared to the way I knit socks, anyway. Mm. But, but yeah, so. Those are, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't say you want your socks to be too much de more, more, more dense, dense than that. Well, actually, that's a personal Preference. I don't need to speak for you, but <laughs> <laughs> but they're pretty dense, I would say. Mm. But I mean, like I'm, like I said, used to bulletproof, and um, I do like. Um, I mean, I do like how they came out. The mm -hmm. that the material is very substantial. You know, like mm -hmm. they seem like a good wearing pair of socks. Well, I think this would be fabulous. Like I think I would actually even jump up to a, a two. Um, and make dress socks. And so they'll be, you know, thin. Do these ones have nylon? Oh, no, that's the same. They're 100% yep. superwash? Yep. They have so no nylon. No nylon. Okay. Which I am curious about that because I have a tendency to wear hard on my Yeah, my even items. so, I mean, like, they feel pretty... Like I said, they feel pretty substantial, you know, but I guess you'll have to see after you wash them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> see how it goes. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so excited to get these finished and get those on the needles. I also have um, another self-striping colorway that I got last year in my staff, uh, stash for, um, uh, it's called um, Christmas Wreath or... or no, I think it's just called Wreath, period. Um, and it's a, a winter colorway, so... I mean, we're still in winter, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I can totally do that. Hey, you have at least till New Year's in my <laughs> book. <laughs> to cast on, or... <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so... Well, we'll see, because I have a couple of days off, so we'll see how, how far I get on some items, because... Um, I have a house that needs to be cleaned. <laughs> yeah. Me <You> too. <laughs> but I'm getting better with this um, cooking thing. And 
you know, getting dishes done. That's good. Right? <laughs> well, anyway, so... Trial and uh, error, learning. Yeah. yeah. I guess that's all we have for this week. Um, Christmas is in two days. And I think we will have to see um, how how we feel about recording this weekend. I don't know about you, but... Um, I'm going to say, should we shoot for next Tuesday again? Maybe, yeah. It's because it, otherwise it'll be a very short week as well, which I don't know. We'll don't see know. how it goes. We'll see how it goes, but we'll, um, we'll be recording again in not too long in yeah. any case. So Not a three-week break again. No. <laughs> All right, um, so we'll see you guys again soon, and Merry Christmas. Happy Christmas, Ron. Bye. Bye. Have a great week. I'm being a goof. <laughs> <laughs>